Zirconia crowns are processed in the following order, milling, sintering, and post-processing. Let's take a look at the issues that can arise during each of these processes. First, machining. Let's look at the case where the machine is off-axis and the tool is off-center. The first machine has a misaligned axis. Most machining errors occur because the machine's real and imaginary coordinates are different. Let's take a machine with the y-axis as the rotation axis. Since it rotates around the y-axis, most of the machining errors are in the x-axis direction. The machine has an x-axis coordinate of 45.08 millimeters, which is the center of the actual axis of rotation. Let's say the software is off-center by 40 micrometers to the left. The machining of the occlusal surface of the crown will start with the software off-center by 40 micrometers. For the inner machining, a 180-degree rotation around the y-axis is performed, shifting the machined occlusal surface 40 micrometers to the right of the true center. In the anomaly, the inner machining is done at a point 40 micrometers to the left of the true center. This results in a machining error of 80 micrometers. No matter how well the model is aligned, there will be limitations with this kind of machining error. There are two ways to fix off-center issues. One is manual, and the other is automatic. Let's start with the manual method first. For the machine in the previous example, if the machining error is 80 micrometers in the x-axis direction, the coordinates are off by half of this value at 40 micrometers. Entering this value as a correction into the machine's software will correct it. In the previous method of checking for machining errors, we used auto-align to scan the machined crown and align it with the design file. To see how much the inner and outer surfaces differ, we need to align based on the inner surface. Let's start with the alignment mode. We can sort by the inside using the align by selected area only feature. Go to deviation display mode and see that we have a good inner alignment. Flip it over and read the number of occlusal plane errors. Half of this value is what you need to calibrate your appliance with. Because a machine has three XYZ axes and three rotational axes, sometimes a simple coordinate correction won't work. Most machines have an auto calibration feature. However, I've only seen a few machines with auto calibration that work well. Therefore, when purchasing a machine, I recommend that you verify the automatic calibration by processing the crown before the purchase. Otherwise, you may end up spending a lot of time and money in the laboratory and clinic on post-processing corrections. This issue goes far beyond the machine's processing speed and purchase price. So far, we can give you one tip. It's theoretically impossible to make errors in the direction of the axis of rotation. Therefore, machining the crown with the root center of the crown in the direction of the rotation axis can significantly reduce the machining error of the adjacent surface, even if the axis is misaligned. The crown will still fit because the error in the adjacent plane is not big. This is very useful because you only need to adjust the error expressed in the occlusal plane. The second source of machining error is tool runout. Tool runout refers to off-center rotation. It occurs when the tool is not exactly centered due to machine age, dirty collets, and so on. As a result, the tool is machined slightly more than it should be, resulting in loose contact points with the inner surface. If you don't understand this problem, it's easy to make the mistake of trying to fix it by over-designing the adjacent faces. A more fundamental fix is to clean the collet that holds the tool or replace it if it's old. If the numbers aren't significant, a useful approach is to modify the tool size you enter into the machine to reflect the machining error. Notice that the crown is machined undersized before compensating for the tool size. You can check that number and enter it into the software that calculates the toolpath to make corrections.
errors can still occur while sintering. Zirconia shrinks during sintering. Depending on the zirconia block, it can be temperature sensitive or have problems with uniform shrinkage. It also causes problems if the sintering temperature is not high enough. There are many different blocks available in the market. Some blocks may not have stable sintering results, so it's recommended to check before using them. There are temperature sensitive blocks in the sintering machine. It's important to follow the manufacturer's recommended temperature. There is a slight difference between the temperature displayed by the machine and the actual temperature. If the heating wire becomes thinner or dirty with use, the temperature can drop, or it could overheat if the temperature sensor is broken. For the above reasons, it's necessary to check the actual temperature. The test ring below can be used to measure the actual temperature. This is a way to measure the reduced size after a sintering cycle. You can measure the shrunk size and find the corresponding temperature in the table on the left. The table on the left is based on an hour. You can use the table on the right to compensate for holding time at the highest temperature during sintering. The recommended temperature of the material is 1530 degrees, so I set the display temperature of the equipment to 1530 degrees and operated it, and the actual temperature was 1550 degrees. I lowered the display temperature and corrected the measured temperature to 1535 degrees. I experimented with different materials to see how they would react to temperature changes. When I sintered it at 100 degrees, it was slightly smaller but still usable. Conversely, when machining at a setting 100 degrees lower, there was less shrinkage, showing a positive inner and outer error. Temperature also causes color issues. Keep in mind, that colors tend to be darker at lower temperatures and lighter at higher temperatures. This is a comparison of a scan before sintering and after rapid sintering. We found that there are no issues with color and volume stability when using rapid fire only blocks. Finally, let's talk about issues concerning post processing methods. On the left is immediately after sintering, in the middle is polished. On the right is the result of glazing. Glazing is used because it's easier to process multiple pieces simultaneously and can reproduce a more natural texture, but be aware that this can result in a roughly 50 to 100 micrometers increase.